Warning, it is the opinion of the Forestry Productions LLC and the Working Perspectives podcast that we should inform you that some of the language used in this recording could possibly be considered offensive. You have been warned, so if you decide to listen to the recording, then don't complain about the language. Like We took Monopoly pretty seriously, and I'll tell you this right now, I was fucking incredible at it, right? And I, I won a lot of the time, but I still won't play anymore. One, too fucking long, and two, it yep. turns into a fucking bloodbath. That's yeah. all Monopoly. It's a is. nightmare every time. It's a nightmare every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you- Hi, hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk to some real people about some real things, living real lives, doing real stuff. This is the Working Perspectives Podcast. I am Matt Lavelle, accompanied by... Le Schmizer, Liam Reese, and the bad boy Benoit Poutkasse, Burn Podcasse. Uh, T's and P's to our boy Strong Stem Steve Cabot. He's dealing with an issue right now. Uh, R.I.P. to Bruno, his Rottweiler. You're a real one. You're a real one. And then. Uh, but other than that, in case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content and all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast. And you can join us on the Twitter and the Tiki Talk at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workingperspectives at gmail.com. And please like, subscribe so we keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. The Schmoosh, how we doing? Bay, bay. Uh, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I left the milk out this morning, so Ooh, I've been kind of off. Yeah, came home tough. from work. It was sitting right there. Not tough. Good. That's tough. That's tough stuff, man. That's a rough one yep. to recover from, but good luck. Yep. Um, Benoit Pahud Kisse, how are you, sir? I'm chilling, man. I'm good. Happy to happy to be here as always. Love it. Well, we're happy to have you. And speaking of being happy to have you, this is the Working Perspectives Podcast. Let's get this thing started. Let's go. It's our objective to be effective by voice in societies. Working perspective, exploring your day and how you get paid. Launching a new episode every Tuesday. Your day can transform while we inform with new episodes available on every platform. So check out our vibe and how we get live. Then do us a solid share and subscribe. We're just sharing. We're just sharing. We're just sharing. Working perspectives. All right. Uh, On the show this week, we aired the Sarah St. Clair episode. Uh, Super fun episode. She was uh, she was a total doll. Loved having her on. Really interesting story. A lot of fun. Can't wait to have her back. And that is available on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. Uh, But next week on the show, it is the return of the magic man himself, Luzerne County's favorite son, the pride of 44, Pennsylvania, the one and only magic man, Murph Meyer. And Murph is back next week, nice. baby. Love having him back. He's here. We're going to talk about his uh, his new podcast, the week self, uh, self-medicated self podcast with Murph Meyer's Weekly Dose. Love that show. He's had some great guests on there. Uh, you know, uh, John uh, Gabris and... Uh, you know, Chris Gethard and Tim Casey, just to name a few. I love it. I listen every week. It's a great show about the harm reduction movement. He's really doing great work there. Super proud to have him on. And it's a, it's a really good one. So super excited to have him back. I'll tell you this. He was the sixth ever guest on the Work and Perspectives podcast. And his episode will be the 238th, maybe? Oof. So yeah, he really uh really took his time getting the fuck back here. I don't know what to tell you. But uh okay. <laughs> but yeah, he but, moved uh, across the country. He had a kid, you know, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that old chestnut. Um, but on this show, 
we will be bringing you topics from around the globe. The topics will fall under three different categories. The categories are Stupid Is As Stupid Does, Incredibly Incredible, and Sports and Speds. Benoit Poutkasse, I'm going to kick it to you. What do you got right. for Stupid Is As Stupid Does? So we've we've all played Monopoly, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and we know that Monopoly nine times out of ten goes pretty bad. Mm. Um, everybody plays by different rules. Um, there's always someone who takes it way way too seriously. It's a long game. Um, but in Brussels, capital of Belgium, earlier this week, there was an incident on the streets. Um, a man became aggravated with four people sitting outside of his home playing Monopoly at five o'clock in the morning. So he, he had a big, you know, big broomstick went out there, started making some noise. Here's where the stupidity really comes in. The man's son, unnamed, also leaves the house, falls out his dad with a samurai sword. Now, you got a samurai sword and the other guy has a thimble, right? You figure you're going to be okay. Well, during the fracas, uh, the sword came unsheathed. One of the Monopoly players was injured. The man holding the sword was injured. Both were arrested. Both were sent to the hospital, but the man who was brandishing the sword is in life-threatening condition, and the Monopoly player is already home. So, But my point is, how bad, how stupid do you have to be to bring a samurai sword to a Monopoly fight and lose? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that top hat. It'll always get you, babe. It'll always get you. Damn. I mean, yeah, if you show up, it's just like the Dutch to show bring a samurai sword to a Monopoly fight. Belgians. Belgians. Yep. The Belgians, the Dutch. Aren't they all the same? Dude. Not quite. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, uh, yeah. Any game of Monopoly should be like, you know, going to a nightclub in like a not so nice neighborhood. Like there should be metal detectors at the door and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like there should be like weapons should be banned from the premise because For Monopoly sure is awful it's, cut dude. it's awful dude. it brings out the worst in yeah. everyone yeah dude, my kid asked me to play monopoly all the time and i fucking hate it dude <laughs> i fucking hate monopoly i don't even like playing with her because then if i win she gets like all upset and everything and then if yeah. i lose i lost to an eight-year-old in monopoly yeah. and played yeah. all that time you know it's yeah. just yeah. if it's you dude. lose she's she's like oh shit my dad doesn't know how to do yeah. things with money. Yeah, my dad's a, a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'll tell you, I don't even I won't play Monopoly <laughs> anymore just because like we played it a lot at my house. We had like our Monopoly board was a cherry wood Monopoly board with a felt center. All the cards Whoa. were like they had like gold corners on them, like metal gold corners. Gold so embossed. Yeah. They were like so they didn't like bend or whatever. Every like we took Monopoly pretty seriously. And I'll tell you this right now. I was fucking incredible at it. Right. And I I won a lot of the time, but I still won't play anymore. One, too fucking long. And two, it yep. turns into a fucking bloodbath. That's yeah. all Monopoly. It's a is. nightmare every time. It's a nightmare every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you should have to also like, especially if you're playing with family, you should have to sign an NDA before you go in there. Just like, Listen, <laughs> whatever is said during this Monopoly game, because like things will come up from the past. Yeah. Like you, you're you're trying to hurt someone. Maddie, of all the of all four Lavelle children, who was the biggest cheater? Natalie, the worst. Yeah. She's a fucking asshole. Yeah. Well, she's the oldest too, though, so I, I that makes sense. One time we were playing, and my dad was playing with us, right? Like, so it was all four kids and my dad. And like an hour in, he was just like so fed up that he's like, "I'm going to bed." And he gives out everybody like the he had like yes. money and stuff, and he just like gave it out to everybody. And because Natalie was such a cheater, he like he gave me like a five hundred and a couple properties. He gave Alex like most of it because Alex is the youngest. He gave Tom like the same, like a couple hundred and some properties. And he gave my sister like 20 bucks and a get out of jail free card. You know what I mean? Like that's just the kind of shit <laughs> player she is. Yeah. You know? And she and then, the money. and then of course she lost her fucking mind and flips the board and it turned into a whole thing. But hey, I had a couple hotels on Baltic Avenue and I was cleaning up. You know what I mean? <laughs> the key is, I'll tell you this right now for all you Monopoly players out there. You want to get Baltic, you want to get Mediterranean because they're the cheapest ones and you can throw hotels on them right away. It don't take long to get your hotels on them and everybody hits them because they're just past go. They might be cheap, but they're the slums and they add up. I'm saying 
once you get Baltic, then you can move on to your purples and then you, you know, your greens and whatever. But the, you, you know, that's, I'm telling you, I think Baltic, I is think, perfect, but I think Baltic slumlording is, is the, like, is the proper strategy. Mm-hmm. Sure. Monopoly. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Start yeah. small. Yeah. You want that first row because everybody hits on that first row because they're trying to come big around the corner because they want to pass go and get that two honey. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And fuck the railroad. You know, fuck. But <laughs> well, right. at dumb. least there were no samurai swords in the Lavelle house you know, that fateful night. You know what I would love is, you know how like there's all these like gimmick monopolies. Like I remember there was like a Penn State opoly and yeah, yeah. there's a Scranton opoly. You know, like there's all these gimmick ones. I would love if Monopoly now announced a new piece of like that you can be and it's the samurai sword. I would love if they... let's, let's submit it. Let's submit it. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a cool piece. Yeah. It would start. People would fight over it, which I think I'm is always, what the makers of Monopoly want. Is I'm to always create strife. the boot. Yeah. I'm always the boot. Let's want the 22 tucked into a sock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maddie, I'm also a boot guy. Yeah. Always the boot. Nice. All right. Let's keep it moving then. Uh, Lashmoosh, what do you, that was great, Burn. Uh, Lashmoosh, what do you got for stupid is the stupid does? All right. So we're in Brussels. We're going back to the United States. Florida. Again. You guys, what do, what do I always say is the number one rule at the Griffin Middle School in Tallahassee? What's the number one rule? Don't bring a gun. Um, you don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> the, t- the teacher in Tallahassee, Florida is accused of organizing a middle school fight club. What? Students, yeah, students were allowed to fight in the classroom as long as no one yelled. And no one used their phone. Anyone want to take a wild guess how they got busted? Someone yelled and used someone their phone. Got... Someone used their goddamn phone and taped one of the fights. <laughs> and it got out like parents <laughs> saw it and everything. So the teacher's name was Angel Footman. Love so she had, it wasn't even boys. Wait, wait, she it was a girl? It yes. was a lady teacher? It was a lady teacher. Oh, she's and was it a lady fighters, fight club? And the fighters were sixth grade girls. So well, they would I, participate in 30 seconds. They, par- they would participate vicious. in 30-second fights, and the only rules were, like, no yelling, no uh, cell phones, um, and you were not allowed to pull hair. Everything else, you know you what I mean? You slap like, and go. scratch yeah. and, and punch. and Yeah, 30 seconds, wow. go for it. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of – I'm for it. I'm I mean, are there it. yeah, are there more vicious people in the world than sixth grade? No, I'm not anyone? sure that there are. <laughs> you know, especially girls, like because they're they're tall at that point. You know, they're they're big. They're little. Yeah. Oh. And think back to the reason stu- this is stupid is a stupid does is think back to when you were in sixth grade. If this was going on, like we all know, the number one rule about Fight Club is you don't talk yeah. about Fight Club. Sure. But if you're a twelve year old boy. All you're gonna do is talk about Fight Club. You uh, know what I mean? It's gonna be pretty much the only thing you talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's Girl Fight Club. Woo. Yes, I, I will say this though, guys, and I brought this up on the show before. This is something I found out in my travels. But in dog fighting, they'll never put a female dog versus a male dog because the mm-hmm. female dog is so much more vicious; it'll rip it to shreds. Right? Wow. And so, and I'll tell you this: like I've been to a million fights. Right, dude. Dog fights? Uh, no, no. I've never, <laughs> yeah. I've, I have never been to a dog fight, and I never will. Uh, it's not because I care; it's because I'm allergic to dogs and cats. So fuck off. Ooh. But, um, but no. The when I've been to like MMA or boxing matches, the women fucking throw down, dude. I remember one of the greatest fights I ever saw. It was at it was the you know the police versus the firemen bo- charity boxing match that they do. I was mm-hmm. cornering for Frank Palumbo. And he was he was like the first fight on he opened the night, right? So the next fight was these two women and they were big and they fucking went at it. And they were throwing hams like left and right, just ham steaks all over. And it was all I'll tell you, they are vicious, cutthroat vicious. So man, I would I'll tell you, I mean this teacher, I, I'll tell you this though. I remember uh, Chris Stefano total story when he was in high school. Is that and my dad, dude, like there was teachers like this all over the place back in the day. Where if two boys got into a fight, they were taken to the basement and they were given boxing gloves and they could go around, right? And that's how they settled it. And then it was done after that. You didn't bring it up. If she's doing something like that, I would love to see her success rate. You know what I mean? <laughs> I would love to see it because that shit fucking works. Let him fucking throw. Let him get a black guy. 
You no one's gonna get killed. That's the one thing too. They're twelve. They can't do too too much damage. Maybe you get a busted nose. Maybe you get a fat lip. A black yeah. eye. It's thirty seconds. Game over. That's it. You know. That's it. Like it's. I tell you, ain't nothing wrong with it. It's pretty funny. It only lasted a couple of days before somebody ruined it, though. Oh, dude, I, I can't mean, believe it lasted, it lasted a couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it lasted. It lasted two days, and then on the third day, they got you know busted that's you know hey that's fight club for you that is fight club for that's Flo- the florida <laughs> fight club man that's Jesus funny Christ. but nice all right and that teacher's fired i assume uh yes she's very fired oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> set, set, yeah. set to be arraigned on may 4th she'll yeah. Yeah. i'm sure she'll never teach again what's no, her name again rap, angel what her name is angel footman angel footman shout out fan of the show listener of the show we will follow you and ask you to be on the show Angel Footman, Tallahassee, Florida. Shout out, man, the show, listen to the show. All right, let's keep it moving then. We're going to move on to incredibly incredible uh, Benoit Pahit Kasey. Going back to you, what do you got for incredibly incredible? All right, so we're going to move over to uh, India right now. Um, the story of, uh, I want to get it right, uh, Hemendra and Raj Kuma, who are, were two brothers. Uh, Hemendal had recently gotten married. And uh, as they were opening their gifts and and getting everything, you know, like set up in a house afterwards, uh, they plugged in a stereo and the entire house exploded, killing them both. (laughs) Oh, my God. What? The the stereo was a (laughs) gift from another man who wanted this woman to marry him. And when she declined, he packed it full of explosives (gasps) and blew up the house. Uh, 33-year-old Sarju Markin. Um, Wow. What's also incredibly incredible is that Saju Markin is married with a wife. He just, he wanted a second wife. Oh my gosh. Dude. And when she denied him, uh, he blew up her house, which she wasn't in. So tough luck for the groom and his brother setting up the old entertainment system. Wow. Uh, apparently the blast was so concussive that it collapsed the roof of the home. Oh were. my gosh, dude. That is uh, insane. Dude, that's four nuts. other people, four other wow. people in the house, including an 18-month-old child, were injured, but not seriously. But the two brothers were killed. Wow, God, wow, damn. wow. What happened to the bull? Is he arrested? Oh, he's, he's oh, got, yeah, he's very much yeah. arrested. And he was very fine being like, Yeah, I did it. I'd do it again, too. Like he didn't yeah. he showed no remorse. Yeah. He's like, How dare how dare they? Right. How dare she not want to be my second wife? Yeah. The dude who blew him wow. up, he's only thirty three years old. Like these people were not they were in their like early all in their early thirties, late twenties. So yeah, it's a real move. Like, okay, fine. But I'm gonna send an explosive laden stereo to wow. your to your as a wedding gift and hope that it's genius. Kills. Absolutely fucking genius. As soon as they plugged it in. <laughs> and this was in India, you said, right? This was in India. This was yeah, in India. dude. They're they're wild out there when it comes uh, to like so when it comes to like like rivals, like love rivals. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't the first time I've heard of like people doing like wild shit because like they were in love with some girl and she married someone else. Like they're yeah. they're they're pretty crazy out there. Like when they decide like they want that person to like be their significant other, like they don't fucking let it go, dude. It's it's oh my yeah, out God. there. Well. Man. Mr. Sarju certainly did not. Yeah, he um, certainly did not let it go. <laughs> he worked in a uh, he, he worked uh, in a stone quarry, which is where he learned to uh, let's see blow shit up. <laughs> where he learned to use ammonium nitrate, petrol, and gunpowder received from firecrackers uh, to make explosives. Wow! So he, that's what he learned at the quarry, and he. Stuck in the stereo and blew up his his yeah his love rival. That um, is pretty I, incredible. <laughs> I absolutely fucking love that. I absolutely love that. Ball good for the him. Wall. Yeah, good for him, dude. That's bad. I mean, woo, pretty sucks to be crazy. the brother. Like he was yeah. just like, yeah, can you come over and help me set up my entertainment system? I'm not really great with this. Like, ah, oh, you fuck. Oh, come on, I'll show you where the plugs go. Dude, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean. It is not, you know, they're fucking nuts over there, dude. What are you going to do? But that's, I mean, could you imagine, though, if the police showed up and they're like, oh, she said no to being your second wife? Well, yeah, fuck them. Blow that house. You know, like, you could get away with this. The the moral of the story to me 
was you put yourself in the brother's shoes. When somebody calls you on a Saturday and says, hey, come help me out with this for free, you know, no. keep, Sorry, the, keep the excuses flowing, you know, because yeah. it's never yeah. worth it. <laughs> you never know who's going to blow up your house. I mean, I don't, you know, I I mean, I have some exes, <laughs> but I would never be so bold as to care, right? Like, right. would you have you ever cared about an ex enough to blow up their house with their significant other in it? You know, Matt, like, Matt, not only have I not cared about a significant other, I've never cared about anything enough to <laughs> blow yeah. something up. So. <laughs> It's 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 never um it's never actually crossed my mind like you know what this this situation deserves them to be killed by explosion yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. oh that's too funny yeah you're right I guess you know I mean I don't yeah I don't I don't even know who I would blow up I mean you know what there's someone I'd blow up that I you know that I've never dated you know if there was one person that you could trick with a bomb stereo. Who's it going to be, Vern? Do you know my answer? Because I know my answer. Woody Allen? Woody fucking Allen. I'm blowing yeah. his ass up. <laughs> I knew Fuck you were going him. Woody Allen. He's done. He's done. <laughs> Fuck you, Woody Allen. Not a fan or a listener. No. No, he's fucking... Just quit your whining. Hey, I hear Woody. you, man. Quit your fucking whining. Anybody? You got anybody in mind? Um, I don't want to say it in case I have to, you know? Like, what if I say it and that person gets blown up by someone tomorrow? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, that's a good that's, point. They really stepped in it there. Yeah. Woody Allen was not a bad choice, though, because he, like, you know what I mean, ended up marrying his, like, kid or stepkid yeah, or whatever. Step, yeah. Stepkid. Yeah, yeah, like him or, like, somebody like Roman Polanski. Like, you know what I mean? Those guys are definitely can be blown up. You know? Right. Fun not a lot of people going to miss that. All right. Good shit, Benoit Pudkase. Love it. Shout out Angel Footman, fan of the show, listener of the show. Uh, but also shout out to the Indian guy because, you know, if she says no, fuck her. Right? Am I right? Fucker. Um, Sarju agrees. Sarju. Sarju. Hey, uh, right. You know, Lahayam. Uh, all right. Uh, Lishmoosh, what do you got for incredibly incredible? Go to the great state of California. Love it. We're going to talk about this is probably the last person, one of the last people you'd expect to get busted for this. The San Jose Police Officers Association Executive Director, Joanne. Marianne Segovia was arrested last week for unlawfully importing fentanyl. She's been investi- under investigation since late oh. 2002, 2022, and she, she's just being fired for it now. She's facing 20 years in prison. She's received at least 61 shipments that made it to her house, and she tried to blame her housekeeper number hmm. so for all this. She's got she's imported fentanyl from Hong Kong, Hungary, Singapore, India, and of the five packages they confiscated, there were thousands of pressed fentanyl pills. This is the executive director of the police union uh, in San Jose. Wow, dude, that's terrifying. That is fucking terrifying. Do you know how many like? Think about how many lives she's killed. Like how many people she's mm-hmm. killed. Think a about lot, it. Dude. She's killed probably 100,000, you know, like, or at least caused 100,000 overdoses. If not, I mean, definitely caused that many overdoses. Are you fucking kidding? She, her shit's probably all up the West Coast. And she, I mean, it would be hilarious if it was the housekeeper. You know, they said, <laughs> they said she, they said she like pretty much was supplying like the Bay Area. I was like going to say, it's got to be a huge, something. yeah, that's, that's a tremendous Dude, amount so, of fentanyl. So she, wow. they, th- there's a picture of her, and she looks like a regular, like, 60-year-old lady, dude. You What's know her what name I mean? again? Like, so her name is Joanne Marianne Segovia. And she looks like just like a regular lady, dude, importing all this shit. Dude, that's fucking terrifying yeah and she used like what's wow app, yeah she used Burn, she kind of looks like your mom and and cash <laughs> transactions so I better see some of that money she I mean, she originally provided false information to investigators blah, blah blah so homeland security busted her because her her info was on was found on a phone of another operative who was shipping drugs like into the bay area <laughs> from abroad yeah look at this lady yeah here, she, let me get you a better picture right here you see her yeah, she's just she's bringing cookies to the bake sale, you know. Yeah, dude. remember like the the cocaine godmother, dude. This lady like takes it even like a step further, dude. You yeah. would never think this lady's like bringing. Also, in. she's a cop, isn't she? Yeah, she's the fucking executive director for the police union. 
Oh my god. Dude, look at this. This is her gimmick right here. Holy fuck, dude. It's wild, dude. Dude, look at that fucking box. Wild. That box, that's fucking a that's a box of death is what that yep. fucking mm -hmm. is. That is it's a millions box of dollars. Of fucking death. It's also probably Every, like 1.5 million dollars. There's more death in this box. Oh my god. The worst wow. part is the worst part is about all this is you know you know what I mean she, even though she's busted she's fired and everything she was the police union executive director dude she knows people and everything yeah she's not gonna do that full twenty years no. dude for a regular citizen dude you're moving all that you get caught with that dude that's like you're looking at like a life sentence dude. oh and they're putting you in fucking big sandy you know what I mean? well that's dude, the homeland, thing too also she's homeland not going... security busts you you're fucked. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I would really, I would really love though if it was the housekeeper. I would really love that if she was just like, you know, that's her gimmick. Like fucking she, masterminded it. Just, oh, I'd love it. I would love it. And if it was, I'd be like, let her go because she fucking earned it. But nice. All right. Well, don't let her go. She's a murderer. But damn, <laughs> that's pretty fucking good, dude. It's San Jose. Every time you say San Jose, I just think of the sharks. But all right. Nice. Um, man, pretty fucking good. Good thing we got her out of there. Uh, let's keep it moving. Then we're gonna go on to uh, sports and spets, right? Uh, Lishmoosh, I'm gonna go back to you on this one. What do you got for sports and spades? All right, so we were in school earlier. We were in middle school. Let's let's stay in school. You know what I mean? We're gonna go to an elementary school in Lawton, Ohio. Love it. A gym teacher is being charged with assault and battery for hitting a kid with a dodgeball. So the student went to the principal after getting hit in the back, in the leg, and then hit in the face, knocking his glasses off. Now, before you react, because when I saw this story, I was like, oh, come on, man. What? They're busting this gym teacher just for playing some dodgeball? Nah, dude, it wasn't even like that. The kid threw a dodgeball. This is the kid's story. He threw a dodgeball. It bounced off of another kid, hit the teacher. So the teacher becomes enraged after that. Picks up the ball, fucking nails the kid. Picks up another ball, nails him again. Picks it up one last time and just nails him in the face, knocks his last stuff. Like, so he started fucking him up because he was just like mad that the kid accidentally hit him with the gym teacher. This is a fucking gym teacher. So when the cops came and like busted him and everything, his whole story was. Well, the kid hit us with the ball and he didn't apologize for it. Like that somehow like excused him for fucking wow. this poor kid up oh. with, the, with the dodgeball. Jesus. I mean, and how old was this guy? 40 or something? Yeah. So the and, and, gym and, teacher, they, they actually didn't say a whole lot about the gym teacher. I think they're still like yeah, busting keeping for it, up. it and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, that's what it looks like. But uh, I mean, for Dude, it's the, assault of a minor. He's a, a, assaulted a minor. It's an elementary school kid. You know what I mean? Like what how great, what grade was this kid in? Did it say? Just says an elementary school child. I mean, yeah, according to first court documents. Sixth. So what, went to the principal 12, ten, ten, three times. Ten, ele yeah, 11? Ten, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 at the oldest, at the very oldest. Yeah, they won't even say who the guy is. The employee was released on a $1,000 bond. Court date set for May 10th. He hit the student with the ball and asked if he should apologize for doing that. The kid said dude, yes. Dude. He said he told the kid that's how he and the other teacher felt. Dude, I mean, wow. I mean, I don't know. if Don't get it twisted. These kids are fucking pansies and need to be hit with dodgeballs every once in a while. And that's what I thought at first too, Matt. When but, I started reading, but then like as I read the story, I was like, "Oh, this guy's a fucking this, maniac." This, yeah. is a, this is a, this is a man. This is a grown man assaulting an eleven year old. Listen, if you have an aversion to being hit with dodgeballs, don't be a fucking elementary school gym teacher. What else bro, are you gonna do, bro? And bro. maybe if you work at an elementary school at all, maybe have some fucking patience because the oldest kid in an elementary school is what. Fucking 11 years old? Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. I mean, I would love... I mean, this gym teacher, probably... He's probably like 28, right? He's on the juice. He's teaching gym. He's hitting LA Fitness afterwards. He's fucking trying to get into the classic bodybuilding. 
right? He's probably this big jack fucking roided out idiot that just lost his shit on a fucking 12 year old. But I'll tell you this some of these fucking 12 year olds can be annoying as fuck, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) there's other other ways to incentivize other. I mean, if I'm that gym teacher, I'm just making sure other kids are hitting this. I'm just like, everyone get a ball and point it at Schwartz and let him fucking whatever. Figure out a game and make, you know, make make classes be the, uh, the, you you don't do it yourself. I wish J Dub or, or Steve were here right now because when we were kids, we had a gym teacher who was like fucking dude. He was like Matt Omni Singer? Man. Yeah, you ever see yeah, Matt Singer? We had he, yeah. he reminded me of fucking Omni Man. He would like get out and he'd be like, <laughs> All right, new game, and he would just start fucking pelting kids dude, and stuff. He, fucking... he went he went hard against yeah. us when we were like eight, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Eight, nine years old. Yeah, he went he would eventually go to the middle school and he was he was ruthless. Yeah, he was he, ruthless. And he was he was collecting scalps, babe. He, he was sure not, was. Oh, he was not playing. I remember that <laughs> he guy. He used to fuck kids off when we. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we but that's little. back when he didn't say anything. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Man. Well, dude, I'll tell you. I mean, you know, I don't know. It's fucking like it's tough. Like if he, especially too, like imagine if he's five feet away from this kid or whatever. And that's he what fucking rifles him. That's, that's what got me is him. that he didn't hit him once. You know what I mean? Like he hit him once, then probably came up on him again. Kid at this point is probably like curled up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's yeah. just like teeing off on him. Yeah. That's what that's what makes it fucked up for me. So Agreed. fuck that. Guy. He could throw it at him once, hit him in the back or the leg, and it's like, all right, kid, fuck off. But yeah, if he's rifling at him. And he's like, give me another ball. You know, like, come on. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Especially, too, if he's close. We don't know how far away he was. I mean, if it was 30 feet away, then this kid's a pussy. But if it was five feet, then this kid's. Yeah. But either way. All right. Good shit, <laughs> Uh Let's keep it moving. Benoit Pahukasay. What do you got for sports and spades? So we're going to bring it back. Uh, we're going to bring it back to the States here for me. Uh... Um, about a month and a half ago in New York City, Queens uh, changed the name of one of their streets to Jackie Robinson Parkway. Okay. Which mm-hmm. makes a tremendous amount of sense. Um, they spelled Jackie wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> they forgot the C. Now, yeah. Jakey. J A K I E. J A K I E. So Jakey Robinson. Jakey Robinson Parkway was on <laughs> there. And uh-huh. it's just, it's one of those things where like people make mistakes, right? Like there is no shortage of like references or books or articles or, or feature length motion phone. pictures yeah, uh, dude. made about Jackie Robinson. Like it's kind of a big deal. It's kind it's kind don't, of don't, an important figure. Isn't there a day every year that they wear his jersey? Jackie Robinson there Day every year. Sure there sure is, dude. Right. <laughs> so Christ big shouts, cross. big shouts to uh to the Queens New York City Transportation Department, specifically the Queens branch for um idiots. And they literally like unveiled it. Like pull the sheet off. There's the street sign. And people were like, um, let me just Yeah, that's wrong, guys. That's wrong. Did no one no one looked at this? No one double checked it, no one did an edit to see yeah. how I mean even if you were just guessing at how you spelled Jackie, yeah. right? Yeah. Was your phone autocorrect you? And yeah, (laughs) this is just another instance of like we talk about these stories sometimes where like these these, like like, like, local government buildings and stuff. Yeah, like Newark where we're like, so all of these people in this building, like it's not like somebody just spelled that wrong and then they threw it up and that was it. No one else saw it. Tons of people involved in this and everything. It went through like person after person after person. They they contracted a company out to make the fucking sign. And nobody at the company that made the sign said like, hey, man, are you sure this is how you want to spell Jackie yeah. Robinson? Yeah. 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 Multiple organizations, uh, people, uh, uh, bureaucrats and tradesmen. And uh, yep. made it all the way, made it all the way up there. <laughs> I would unveiling. love that. I would love I would love if it was something as simple as like, hey, sorry guys, the sign place ran out of C's. I don't know what to tell you. All we could do was Jake. I or mean, they only they only had enough room for just enough letters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, maybe nobody will notice the C. Take the C. And then you're like, do we really need to call it Parkway then? Can't we just call it Street? Yeah. You know? Avenue's nice. You're right. Ave's nice. Ave. Yeah. Road RD Dude, period. Wow, yeah. man, that's pretty. I mean, that's fucking. Hey, New York, welcome to Queens. Get your yeah. pizza. Fucking <laughs> Christ, golly. 
Man, that's tough. But uh, all right, that was pretty good. So, man, good shit, guys. We are coming to the top of time. Uh, before we get out of here, la shmoo, shmoo. what do you got? I got to say, I'm feeling a lot better about the milk now. Nice. Now that we've had time to talk, I feel a lot better about it. Good. I'm glad to hear great callback. Excellent stuff. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Great job. Uh, Benoit Pahoud Kase, you stepped in for our man, Strong Sam Steve Cabot. Again, tease and peace to him and Bruno the Rottweiler, RIP, one love. Uh, but Benoit, you did great tonight. Good job filling in. Uh, what do you have to say to the Benoit Pahoud Kase fanatics before we get out of here? Wow. Um, just, you know, always a pleasure reaching out to you guys, Liam. You know, everyone leaves the milk out once in a while. At least it didn't yeah. get published and put on a street sign. <laughs> um and everybody uh tune in next week for uh the man the myth the uh pseudo sasquatch murph meyer oh yeah gonna be a good one yeah everyone leaves the milk out but not everyone you know at least and impregnate your girlfriend liam you know what i'm saying not everyone drinks it <laughs> <laughs> is it what kind of milk was it oh dude you know what you want to know what makes it sting i gotta drink that lactate shit so it's oh, like twice as much as baby. regular milk you know Ooh, baby I mean, did it go bad? Uh, I don't, I don't push my luck with like dairy and mm-hmm. you know what I mean. That it's lactate stuff. I've done that lactate gimmick. The blue one? Do you do the blue one? Uh, we do the red one because I still have a fucking a growing child. Yeah, true. She needs a calcium. Yep. Nice. All right. Well, speaking of needing calcium, this has been another episode <laughs> of the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, accompanied by Le Chemise Liam Reese. And the bad boy, Benoit Poutkasse, Burn Podcast. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can also on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can join us on the Twitter and the Tiki Talk at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can email us at workingperspectives at gmail.com. Please like, subscribe, so we keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. Have a great weekend. Thanks. See ya. And we're out. All right. Good shit tonight, fellas. Loved it. Loved it. Very good. Very nice. Smooth. Shop. Good. We kept our time. Excellent. Loved it. Now let's talk shop. Let's talk shop. Talking shop. This is is another one. Dude, I'm going to follow this one. It, this elementary school teacher should get put on blast. So when they release his name, I'm fucking... Dude, you know, I mean, know. I'm in that Dude one. you know what you should do, Liam? Make a... Do like your comic... Uh, comic ah, yes, 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 video. yes. Do a yes. quick shout out on this yeah, fucking Late slap. breaking news. Yes, late yeah. breaking... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I can find like the... Late break news sound. Yeah. Yeah. Put it out. Oh, also, shit. I forgot to mention, uh, Steve, he he sent us a story from the beyond. He wanted us to talk about the Dalai Lama himself, old Lama. So uh, I saw the story. He's talking. Yeah. Tongue punching a fucking. Jesus, a lot of kids stuff. Yeah, today, you know. Did you, did you guys see? It's did you guys see the video? Oh God, dude! I don't even want to. I it's, saw the picture. It's it's fucking, it's pretty hard to watch, dude. It's brutal, dude. It's brutal. I don't, I don't know the story. So uh, go ahead, Liam. The Dalai Lama's got this kid sitting on his lap, and for Young whatever kid reason, too. I don't know. Young kid. Yeah, he's like uh, doing whatever the Dalai Lama does with like religion or whatever. You know, he's got like a a little boy sitting on his lap, and he's already like being weird with the kid but he's speaking in another language so you can't really hear what he's saying and he's just like then he like kisses the kid on the lips for like mm-hmm. what it, it's already getting weird it feels like a little bit too long but you're like all right he's like old i don't know maybe he's just yeah. slow but then he sticks his tongue out and then in english tells the kid to suck his tongue and it's real burn it's a real fucking video of this guy dude. doing this Dude, it's disturbing. It's very disturbing. It is. It's a tough watch, dude. Yeah. And because the, the kid is clearly like so super uncomfortable. Also, where the fuck is this kid's parents? Because I'll tell you, if anyone try, I would, I would legit. I mean, I'd fucking kill him. I'd. Fuck oh, they were actually they were blown kill. up in a stereo accident earlier this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> this poor kid loses his parents, and then he's got to fuck. And he's got to French the Dalai Lama. That's I gotta hope week. this guy, like, like you know, what I mean, steps down or like whatever. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't even really know like what the Dalai Lama does. Do you guys? Like, I'm pretty. Uh, you no, know, they're not. He's not. He's just a cultural figure. He doesn't is he like just actually... like? Is he just like the Pope, but for like another religion? You know what I mean. He's like the Pope with much less power. Like yeah, at least okay. the Pope has like a lot of power over Catholic do- Catholic doctrine and stuff. Dalai Lama is just they believe the reincarnation of a previous leader, and they have one every generation, and they're they're more of a figurehead. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they don't really have any any governmental impact or like you know the and and, and also Buddhism is not like set up like you know the Catholic Church where it's yeah. all kinds of institutional. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. They're pretty much just it's like it's like it's like the Queen of England. You know what I mean? Like they're just so, kind of there because they've always been there and they're more yeah symbolic than anything. So I I will say that as like disturbing and like fucked up as this story is, there was like a really good meme. It's like Walter White and he's wearing like, you know, like the priest collar and everything. And it's that scene from Breaking Bad when he goes up to the tweakers. It's Walter White in a collar going, stay the fuck out of my territory. <laughs> Talking about the Dalai Lama. I thought it was great. I lost it. But yeah. So, okay. Since Steve's not here, let's talk a little show up. What do you got? We saw Ahsoka trailer. Oh. And then, you know, we had a little little Mando this week looking good. Oh, Anybody also, see- Benoit, big fucking news. Big fucking news. Little dunk in the egg coming to HBO. Oh, yeah? You didn't hear? No. Oh. So that better- I knew it was I knew it was like on the list of all the shows they were working on, but I didn't know that it was officially like oh it's on, it officially got... they've ordered it. Yes. It's on the HBO what is it? gimmick today. The dunk Dunkin the egg. Okay. Let let me rattle a little, little bit over here. Okay. Let me give you a little bit of here. Okay. okay. The Tales of Dunkin' Get a snack, Liam. Get a snack. Three st- short stories by George I. I. Martin, right? Oh, Okay. Wieners, wieners, wieners. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes place. Uh, it takes place so roughly a hundred years prior to the Song of Ice and Fire, right? And uh-huh. it's about a hedge knight who finds a squire, and you know, kind of like the different things that they get into. But I'm super excited because there has a lot to do with what was called the Black Fire Rebellion is a big part of these three books and we don't get a lot of that but that was another internal civil war with house targaryen the dragons are kind of gone at this point you know um and then but uh also i'll say this egg is short for Aegon. so dunk is sir duncan the tall right that was his name who was also i think the great grandfather of brienne of tarth correct right and uh egg is Aegon of house targaryen right and they kind of get they meet each other as kids and egg is uh like a or duncan sir duncan the tall is like this roaming kind of knight and he gets into some shenanigans at a couple tournaments and when he's working as a hired gun for a guy down and uh you know right above dawn then he ends up getting caught with the butter bees, with the bees burying the butter bees at a tourney there when there was almost another rebel. So it's pretty good, pretty good. Liam, Liam, how closely did you did you watch the show? Game did of Thrones. You, yeah, I still haven't seen all of them. So when Matt says Aegon Targaryen, he's talking about um, a character that we're already familiar with. Yeah, so Targaryens are. Uh, are, uh, Do you the, remember the the wise old blind guy up at yeah, the, and like watch? the kid who fell out the window and broke his legs or whatever? Jesus at, Christ! Yeah, they, they, don't even fucking try. The late what? The lady that the lady that bangs her uh, brother or whatever, right? Those those are the or, Lannisters, Liam. Get yeah. Oh yeah, that's who I was thinking right of. Now. The Lannisters. All right. Liam's like, not really. I have a loose grip of the first ever episode of the show. And after that, it all kind of gets hazy. Dude, because you know what? Like, everyone's like, oh, man, the show's so awesome. You'll love it. Like, you like stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But, dude, like, I try to watch it. And it just, like, I can't get into it, dude. I yeah, try. Man, listen, everybody has, their, everybody has like, their, their pop culture thing where you're like, I just don't get it. 
Yeah. And I know um, it's like super popular and everybody loves it. And just like, you know, did, I, did we see the um, secret invasion uh, yeah, the, trailer? That looks awesome. But like, I don't, I don't know, man. I have my, the I have what? my the con- secret invasion trailer. Yeah. The Marvel secret invasion trailer that the, the uh, Nick Fury, essentially the Nick Fury, uh, Amelia but, Clark. Oh, wait, uh, the one show. that we fucking talked about. Liam, the one we did an episode of Comic Perspectives yeah. on, yeah, oh. but I like kind of, I kind of like have my, um, I kind of like have my concerns about the Secret Invasion because there's like so many characters in that, so I think it's only associated by name, you know, because yeah, it's, gonna like, be a, it's gonna be a very, very, very different story. It seems like Nick Fury is really the, the central point of it. Yeah. Now Nick Fury's in Secret Invasion, and yeah, but this almost like, seems like the Nick Fury. Yeah, he puts show, together. You know? Yeah, he puts together this team that's like not heroes they're familiar with, so they can't like really replicate him and stuff. So he knows he can trust them and whatnot. So I think like that's what the moves he's going to try to pull. The thing uh, I was I- most surprised with is that like that marvel's movie from the uh preview i saw doesn't look shitty no it looks awesome like it doesn't Um, look horrible what 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 thing movie the marvels yeah so it's like captain marvel uh monica rambo and uh miss marvel which miss marvel is like i think is like better as like a supporting character so is she hulk so like those shows i feel like they were just kind of like you know like passion projects and stuff and that's why they didn't she do hulk as well the worst yeah. thing that they yeah i think they just didn't done. do as well because they just like decided like we're doing this and you're gonna like it and if you don't you're fucking toxic you know what i mean and it's like uh all right she man. Hulk was Sorry. so <laughs> fucking awful i was so see, disappointed I didn't, see, I didn't hate she hulk because you're a cunt. kind of a, you're a oh, cunt she fucking you're what's burn. your expectation you no know, we do not your we do not disagree on lot but that is a fucking shitty thing but to like say. what was that your expectation like I've read something, Hulk, man. something like there's something. not there's not a whole it's like the Hulk, but a girl. There's not a whole lot like of depth to my I was kind of fine. They made it like kind of a goofy show. And the same thing with Miss Marvel, like that show was definitely geared towards like younger people. Yeah, but that's kind of that's what I've kind of liked about Marvel over the years. Is they make different kinds of movies. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and they, like they don't they can't all be the same kind. They can't all be geared toward toward everyone they can't all be geared toward the same audience you know so i i knew right away watching like miss marvel like episode two i'm like okay well they made six of these it's not really made for me but they'll do some stuff that's going to tie in later on and it was a fine it was a half hour you know what i mean it was, it was it i was, never was... watched miss marvel is it worth it mm. it's 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 fine yeah it's no you, didn't miss, you didn't miss much you can just no it's no low pretty much but... yeah so to me like the shows that like stand apart are like loki and if we're talking about all like all comic shows like to me like like Loki and like Peacemaker, like stand apart from the rest. I you know rewatched I mean? that recently. It is so fucking good. Like for their own reasons, Loki and Pe- Peacemaker oh, stand sp- apart from the rest. You know what I just took Layla to? That was like perfect for to bring your kid to the what? Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh yeah, well, oh, we're, was we're it going, good? This weekend. That, that was perfect to bring your kid to. Was it a down. good movie? Yes, and I don't want to ruin like what they. The reason it was good. If I tell you the reasons it was good, it kind of like ruins the. Like oh, nice, like nostalgia, yeah. surprises and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, we're going. Uh, we're going. We're going this week. He's at, he's at a soccer game at eight on Saturday morning, and then he's like, "Can we go see the Mario movie?" We're like, can't yeah, do I'll see if there's yeah. a ten fifteen, dude. Let's go, dude. You'll definitely yeah. like it as if as long as you're like familiar with like the like most of the Mario games. Oh, I'm like, familiar. Yeah, then then you'll love it. It's it's cool. It's 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 a great one to watch with your kids. That's for sure. I, I'll tell, I saw the cast yeah. and I was like, okay, Chris Pratt, fine. Hey, Charlie Day, that's fun. Jack Black is Bowser. Let's go. Jack Black is Bowser. Let's go. It's like steals the show, dude. Yeah. Surprise, and, surprise. And there's like this star from Mario Galaxy that like, you know, it, it's probably the funniest character in the movie. And yeah. it's like completely unexpected. Nice. Yeah, it's like this little star from you'll you'll know what I'm talking about when you yeah, watch yeah. it. There's a little star from Mario Galaxy that's fucking hilarious dude dude yeah we're, we're going we're going this weekend for sure so i think it's gonna rain i think we're supposed to get rain this weekend too at least down here oh god man i'm supposed to work this weekend if it rains that's oh, it's gonna, supposed to rain fuck on me so i mean it's nice supposed to rain to... down here i mean only an, i'm an hour away but yeah but all still. right all right guys good shit i'm calling it good shit tonight